Nick Shaheen here recapping the week ending uh, March 6, uh, 2015. Uh, let's start with today's scoreboard, Friday, options expiration day. Oh my, red across the board. In fact, uh, reddest since uh, for a while now. And uh, the score is basically everything. Uh, let's start with the Dow down 1.5%. SPX just about the same, a little less. That's almost 30 points on the uh, SPX, almost uh, 280 points on the Dow. We were down over 300 points on the Dow. Uh, NASDAQ fared a little better, down 1.2%. And that's because of Apple. Uh, more on that one in a little bit. Uh, NASDAQ lost 52 points, almost 53. Uh, small caps down uh, 1.36, so just about the same as the S&P, which is good that they're not leading by a lot more. On a really bad day, I would expect the RUT to be down 2% when the S&P down 1.5%. Now, the VIX is up uh, 8%, but it was higher, it was lower. So there's definitely fear in the market, or at least unease. Uh, more on the Apple thing, okay, what happened today? We had, uh, let's look at the S&P. Uh, the S&P was, uh, they opened up ugly and then held together right here by Apple because Apple, um, we caught word, look at the rip right here, that Apple will replace AT&T in the Dow. So this usually spurs buying. Um, and because people that mirror the Dow would need to add Apple in order to keep the mirror image correct in their indices, so or funds. <clears throat> so right here, that rip held the markets together until Apple lost its lunch and, in fact, went red for a little bit and then saved the day by closing 0.15% green, 19 cents green. Not a good showing after being up almost 2% in the morning, almost 1.30. Now, uh, members have seen the levels of resistance that I've shared every day, and these play out exactly where, uh, where the levels of resistance. And that's a change. That is a change of sentiment in, in uh, price action behavior in Apple. Good to note right there. Uh, I had, um, let's see here. The NASDAQ, uh, same as the S&P, tried to hold out. Look, you can overlay these two. Um, late in the day, they tried to make a comeback. So they closed well relative to what was going on. Um, this is oil, back under 50, enough said, moving on. Uh, right here is the uh, small caps. Now, the difference in the small caps is they tried to hold on with everything and then fell apart really quickly right here on high volume, relatively speaking. And then the rest of the day, they just got quiet. So let me zoom in. Or high volume compared to the rest of the day. So they... Uh, they're not so convinced. They weren't convinced on the upside. I told you they were hesitant to cross 1240. I've been saying it for weeks, and then they gave it right back, and now they're 1217. They barely hung on to that, and so they're not convinced with the upside, not convinced with the downside. So they just want to meander. That's why iron condors are working so well. Week after week, I keep telling you that that's the way to go. All right. So this is how the day ended. Let's see as far as damage control. Uh, let's go with the spy. I told you it's been droopy, and uh, with these two candles, uh, we had one good candle, and this is definitely droopy. So we lost that green line, which had been uh, resistance before, and tried to be support here, but here, and then failed. Um, opened up here, closed down here, not a good candle. Absolutely not a good candle. Nothing good to be said about today. Absolutely nothing. This is the first day in a long time where the bears had a clear win. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Volume, look at that. You do not want to see that. Twice as much as yesterday with the green candle, even twice as much as the days before that that were also red. So the redness is growing, meaning the conviction and the sell thesis is growing. You don't want to see that. You want them abating. So now the question is, how far down are they willing to take it? And will they breach this one? This is a two-year-old line. Uh, so we did breach it briefly here, but we quickly recovered from it, and we did poke through it here. So I still count it as a decent place to bounce, okay? Uh, the options, uh, the positions in the options market still warrant that and, and still support that thesis. Um, Monday, we'll have new data, and we'll come up with a different thesis. IWM definitely broke uh, whatever uh, ascending wedge we had. And this is an ugly candle because they tried to hang out of here, and they opened here. They tried to run and then failed and almost closed at the low. Saved it a little bit at the end. They didn't close at the low, but that is an ugly candle. Volume also bigger than the 10-day average, also almost twice as big as yesterday's. Uh, let's look at the cues. Maybe they have better news because of Apple. Uh, nope, just as ugly a candle. 
um, reverting to the mean, that blue line, that's the best fit line, regression line. So opened up here at the high almost, closed at the low almost, not a good candle. Also volume twice as much as yesterday and above the 10-day average. You do not want to see that. All right, so what happened here? This was a breakout, and this was eyeballing a measured uh, target of that breakout. So now we start looking at other formations, and it looks a little bearish um, any which way I look here and there. You know, not telling doom, but telling uh, maybe there is some more room to down. So I keep my mind open with my longs. I book some profits if I have them, and I start to uh, short a little bit. Maybe have a credit call spreads, have a put spreads, whatever your thesis is. All right, so this is what we'll look like. How about the week? How was the week? The week, I believe, was red for all indices. Um, not good. That's the SPY and uh, pretty decent volume, higher than the last two two weeks. How about the IWM, which represents the uh, small caps? Uh, again, maybe we're trending to trying to trade these, so maybe we're going to come down towards this level before this is over. Also higher volume than last week. And lastly, the Qs. That's the the Nasdaq representation. Also, last week they were hmm, a little undecided. This week they were decided. And did we break this uptrend? I don't know. Uh, one candle doesn't make a trend, but it's sure an, an ugly candle at that. So I got to be careful with that, uh, with committing with too many longs right now. All right. So um, I think there was good news among the big names. Google had started the week fantastic and ended the week badly, but still eked out a win. However, let me zoom in onto Google. I want to cover that first. This is an ugly candle and could be the start of something bad. Uh, by bad, I mean like down to here somewhere. Um, this is a, um, a pattern where this could have been the target of this uh, breakout. My personal interpretation, check with technical analysts. They might be able more accurate, but hunch tells me that lower it goes. So back to the spirit of what's going on, thoughts, okay? So the freak out today, I need to, first of all, before I start trading, understand why the freak out. And the consensus is uh, good news is bad news. Good news this morning, we had great jobs report, 5.5 unemployment rate, lowest since May of 08, I think I read. Uh, so more likely than not, uh, Yellen should raise rates. However, she's been telling us that she's looking at wage inflation and not inflation. So she has to see measured wage inflation that she can actually taste. Uh, so a 5% is not necessarily what freaked out the, what will freak her out. She said so. And even then, she said she may choose to ignore it. So it's not a given. But let's say it is. So we are going, this is a preview, 1% down or 1.5% down is not a disaster based on this disaster move, right? Good news, bad news thing. But uh, this may be a preview of what's to come in two steps. Uh, when she actually, on the next meeting, she takes out, or they take out, the Fed, the word patient, which apparently everybody agrees that this is the cue that, okay, in the next two statements, uh, they're going to, the next two meetings, they're going to actually hike rates. And then once the date is actually set for the rate hike, rate hike, rate hike they're going to actually sell the markets again. So this may have been just a preview of that. Now, are they, is that a legitimate fear? I think it is. A big portion of the run-ups to here has been financial engineering. I prefer to call it fengineering. I made up that word. Feel free to use it. Um, and with higher rates, the companies will be less likely to, to, to borrow money. Uh, they'll issue bonds maybe, but they're, they're less likely to borrow money in order to um, buy back their own stocks. So that's just a... You know, one of those added downside pressure thoughts uh, that I have. So I'm not forecasting the disaster, but I'm saying, you know, the extra Uber people that were calling for, okay, once we hit NASDAQ 5000, let's hit the pedal, we're going higher. And now those same people are saying the opposite of the story. They're saying, okay, once, um, you know, a, 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 a you know, a little drop won't be too bad. Exactly the same people today. I saw them say that. Just last week, they were saying, once we hit that, that's just a uh, more more upside. So which is it? You know, you can't be flip-flopping like that. And if you are, you better be trading what we're trading, iron condors. So uh, we're going to meander here. I don't think we have a disaster on our hands. The Fed's in it to win it still. So um, what happened with the variables, uh, the, the two major variables that got whacked today? 
um, that got wacky today, I should say. Rates, the 10-year went up, crashed up 6%, where the TLT, which are the bonds, crashed down to and changed percent. So usually that spurs a huge move in the market upwards. However, today we had the opposite. And uh, just this week, I mentioned the fact that we have to see this happen, where the usual flips, otherwise markets are going to the moon, and that's not right. Okay, so that's what those are the two major variables that um, I noted today. All right, so um, the story is I need to know why. I need to confirm why we sold off. If so, then I can start nibbling in a few longs. All right, so as far as ranges, we already talked about that. A peak into next week, yes, we could have some lower prices, but we also have some decent supports as well. So the 2050 line comes to mind that it should hold as far as SPX should hold headlines aside okay so we do have headlines potentially from over the weekend with china and japanese um, um, economic reports i think they start on saturday afternoon or night and into sunday night so the futures will be affected by that but then um, we should continue trading on our own data the us once we open there are a few names i want to mention um, tesla for example google already did uh, Tesla, I did make the thesis that once we lose 200, um, 180, 85 can come in fast and it's on its way there. I also said we can short Amazon and that's playing out nicely. Um, same for Apple and that's also playing out nicely. However, however, this is a uh, coin flip toss because it has an event next week. Uh, so they could tell us something new, a flying car. If so, then my puts are gone to zero. If they don't, then my puts are going to be gold. Right now, they are in the money and green for me. Um, and then also, I picked on Priceline since 1260. Uh, so I'm handsomely in the profits here, booked some, but I'm still short it because I think there's more downside to go if markets don't turn around, especially if markets don't turn around. Um, as far as um, any other names, Alibaba, forget about it. We're not going to talk about it today. Facebook is uh, important. It was my canary yesterday uh, because it was green on a bad day. I think it's getting closer to my scenario. I'm shorted. I'm mildly green right now. I'm holding in them um, another day or so. I think if it loses this orange line, uh, 77 can come pretty quickly, maybe 76 even, so or 75 even. So I do have some uh, put spreads cheap but could pay the bills for a couple of weeks, so why not give it a shot? Um, as far as other names in the news, uh, GoPro, oh well, more red, Lulu. I downgraded Lulu a couple of days ago. This morning, Goldman Sachs downgrades it, and bam, pays everybody that follows my downgrade yesterday, or two days ago, and yesterday again. So Lulu paid handsomely as far as a short. Is it time to go more short? I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. I don't want to start it here, that's for sure. Uh, so I would try to find another level to trade it some other time. I'll call it a win and move it on. All right, that's it. Um, signing out. If you have any questions, reach out. I do answer anyone and everyone.